Hello scholars, today is Thursday, April 23rd, 2020. Before we begin scholars, let's do the shimmy shake uh, chant. Let's see if you remember. Get ready, go. A uh, shimmy shimmy shake, a uh, shimmy shimmy shake. The more I read, the more I know. The more I know, the more I grow. The more I grow, the further I go. The further I go, the further I go. Scholars, that was actually a Dr. Seuss quote and we made it into a chant. Say, so cool. Okay, so today we are going to continue finding the characters' motivations. Finding the characters, finding characters, Character motivation, get ready, go. Character motivation is what the character wants or needs. Say, we got that. Conflict is a, conflict is a. I know that com there are so many conflicts in a story or in maybe, or maybe in even chapter scholars. And we're going to be super secret spies. I don't have my magnifying glass today, but we're going to be super secret spies and figure out what those uh, problems are. And when we figure out the problem scholars, we're going to find out the motivations. When we find out if there are motivations between characters, we're able to see if there are conflicts. If there are, if there are, so come with me, read with me, and see if we can find all of those motivations today. All right, so let's get reading. This chapter is called The Funny Walking Stick. Read with me. To pay Mrs. Twit back for the worms in his spaghetti, Mr. Twit thought up a really clever, nasty trick. One night, when the old woman was asleep, he crept out of bed and took her walking stick down, downstairs to his work shed. There, he stuck a tiny round piece of wood, no thicker than a penny, onto the bottom of the stick. This made the stick longer, but the difference was so small. The next morning, Mrs. Twit didn't notice it. The following night, Mr. Twit stuck on another tiny bit of wood. Every night, he crept downstairs and added an extra tiny thickness of wood to the end of the walking stick. He did it very neatly so that, he, so that the extra bits looked like a part of the old stick. Gradually, but oh so gradually, Mrs. Twit's walking stick was getting longer and longer. Now, when something is growing very slowly, it is almost impossible to notice it happening. You, yourself, for example, are actually growing taller every day that goes by. But you wouldn't think it, would you? It's happening so slowly, you can't even notice it from one week to the next. It was the same with Mrs. Twit's walking stick. It was also so slow and gradual that she didn't notice how long it was getting, even when it was halfway up to her shoulder. Oh my goodness, look at this. That stick's too long for you, Mr. Twit said to her one day. Scholars, I want you to think about how is Mr. Twit tricking Mrs. Twit? Why, so it is, Mrs. Twit said, looking at the stick. I've had a feeling there was something wrong, but I couldn't for the life of me think what it was. There's something wrong, all right, Mr. Twit said, beginning to enjoy himself. What can have happened, Mrs. Twit said, staring at her old walking stick. It must suddenly have grown longer. Don't be a fool, Mr. Twit said. How can a walking stick possibly grow longer? It's made of dead wood, isn't it? Dead wood can't grow. Then what on earth has happened? Cried Mrs. Twit. It's not the stick. It's you, said Mr. Twit. It's you that's getting shorter. I've been noticing it for some time now. That's not true, cried Mrs. Twit. You're shrinking, woman said Mr. Twit. It's not possible. Oh, yes, it is. Jolly well is, said Mr. Twit. You're shrinking fast. You're shrinking, shrinking dangerously fast. Why, you must have shrunk at least a foot in the last few days. Never, she cried. Of course you have. Take a look at your stick, you old
old goat and see how much you've shrunk in comparison. You, you've got the shrinks. That's what you've got. You've got the dread shrinks. Mrs. Twip began to feel so trembly, she had to sit down. This chapter is called Mrs. Twit Has the Shrinks. As soon as Mrs. Twit sat down, Mr. Twit pointed at her and shouted, There you are! You're sitting in your old chair and you've shrunk so much, your feet aren't even touching the ground. Mrs. Twit looked down at her feet and by golly, the man was right. Her feet were not touching the ground. Oh my goodness, look at how horrified Mrs. Twit looks in this picture. Checking me. Scholars, why do you think Mrs. Twit's feet don't touch the ground when she sits in her chair? Why do you think that Mrs. Twit's feet don't touch the ground when she sits in her chair. I want you to say it out loud. Get ready. Go. Yes, scholars, I do agree. I do think that Mr. Twit probably, probably put more wood under the legs of the chair. So she thinks that she was shrinking. Oh my goodness. Let's keep reading. Mr. Twit, you see had been just as clever with a chair as he'd been with the walking stick. Every night when he had gone downstairs and stuck a little bit extra onto the stick, he had done the same to the four legs of Mr. Twit's chair. Just look at you sitting there in your same old chair, he cried. You've shrunk so much your feet are dangling in the air. Mrs. Twit went white with fear. Oh, look at her. You've got the shrinks cried Mr. Twit, pointing his finger at her like a pistol. You've got them badly. You've got the most terrible case of shrinks I've ever seen. Mrs. Twit became so frightened, she began to dribble. But Mr. Twit, still remembering the worms in his spaghetti, didn't feel sorry for her at all. I suppose you know what happens to you when you get the shrinks. He said, what? Gasped Mrs. Shrink, Mrs. Twit. What happens? Your head shrinks into your neck and your neck shrinks into your body and your body shrinks into your legs and your legs shrink into your feet. And in the end, there's nothing left, left except a pair of shoes and a bundle of, clo of co old clothes. I can't bear it, cried Mrs. Twit. It's a terrible disease, said Mr. Twit the worst in the world. I, oh, Miss Otago tricked. How long have I got? cried Mrs. Twit. How long before I finish up, a, up as a bundle of old clothes and a pair of shoes? Mr. Twit put on a very solemn face. At the rate you're going, he said, shaking his head sadly. I say not more than 10 or 11 days. But isn't there anything we can do? cried Mrs. Twit. There's only one cure for the shrink, said Mr. Twit. Tell me, she cried. Oh, tell me quickly. Well, we'll have to hurry, said Mr. Twit. I'm ready. I'll hurry. I'll do anything you say, cried Mrs. Twit. You won't last long if you don't, said Mr. Twit, giving her another grisly grin. What is it I must do, cried Mrs. Twit, clutching her she cheeks. You've got to be stretched, said Mr. Twit. Well, scholars, I want you to pause right here. What do you think Mr. Twit's motivation is and Mrs. Twit's motivation? What is Mr. and Mrs. Twit's motivation? I'm going to give you some thinking time. And before I give you that thinking time, I want you to first think about your evidence. Go ahead and look for your evidence. Go. Tracking me? All right, when I say go, I want you to tell me what to write. Come on with me. All right, so 
Tell me what to write for Mr. Mr. Twit's motivation. Go. Yes, scholars, I do think that. I know that Mr. Twit wants to try to convince Mrs. Twit that she's shrinking so she can scare so he can scare her. So let's like let's write that down. Perfect. Now I want to know what Mrs. Mrs. Twit's motivation is. What do you think it is? Tell me. Go. I do think that scholars say easy peasy. So let's write that down. Scholars, you guys are rocking it, finding all of these motivations. I know, I know that my evidence for Mrs. Mr. Twit's motivation is this part right here. I know this because he told us that he wanted to get her back for eating the worms and all of that trickery things that he was doing to her. So this is my motivation. I hope you got you got that evidence, sorry, evidence for Mr. Twit. Let's look at Mrs. Twit's motivation and evidence. We said that she wants to stop shrinking and be her regular size. This was my evidence for um, wanting to be her regular size and knowing that she does not want to shrink. Because on page 23, it says the whole page, if you read the whole page very carefully, she is eager, and I am just summarizing what this page says, she is eager, eager to not shrink because she thinks that she is shrinking, shrinking way too fast. Let's keep reading. Mr. Twit gets a stretching. Mr. Twit led Mrs. Twit outdoors where he had everything ready for the great stretching. He had 100 balloons and lots of strings. Ooh, look at that, scholars. He had a gas cylinder for filling the balloons. He had fixed an iron ring into the ground. Stand here, he said, pointing to the iron ring. He then tied Mrs. Twit's ankles to the iron ring. When that was done, he began filling the balloon with gas. Each balloon was on a long string, and when it was filled with the gas, it was pulled on the string, trying to go up and down. Mr. Twit tied the ends of the strings to the top of Mrs. Twit's body. Some he tied around her neck, some under her arms, some to her wrists, and some even to her hair. Soon, there were 50 colored balloons floating in the air above Mrs. Twit's head. Can you feel them stretching you? Asked Mr. Twit. I can, I can, cried Mr. Mrs. Twit. They're stretching me like mad. He put on another 10 balloons. The, up, the upward pull became very strong. Mrs. Twit was quite helpless now with her feet tied to the ground and her arms pulled upward by the balloons. She was unable to move. She was a prisoner. And Mr. Twit had intended, intended to go away and leave her like that for a couple of days and nights to teach her a lesson. In fact, he was just about to leave when Mrs. Twit opened her big mouth and said something silly. Well, what do you think she is going to say? Oh my goodness, let's keep going. Are you sure my feet are tied properly to the ground? She gasped. If those strings around my ankles break, it'll be goodbye for me. And that's what gave Mr. Twit his second nasty idea. Scholars, make a prediction. What do you think is going to happen next? Make sure that you use the character traits, specifically Mr. Twit's character traits, to get a good prediction and make a good guess. Go! Scholars, that is a great prediction, scholars. My prediction is similar to yours. I think that Mr. Twit 
will do something to Mrs. Twit in order to get her flying up in the air. I hope that's not the case, though, because I know that could be dangerous. All right, let's keep reading. Mrs. Twit goes ballooning up. There's enough pull here to take me to the moon, Mrs. Mrs. Twit cried out. To take you to the moon, exclaimed Mr. Twit. What a ghastly thought. We wouldn't want anything like that to happen. Oh, dear me, no. We most certainly wouldn't, cried Mrs. Twit. Put some more string around my ankles quickly. I want to feel absolutely safe. Very well, my angel, said Mr. Twit, and with a ghoulish grin on his lips, he knelt down at her feet. He took a knife from his pocket, and with one quick slash, he cut through the strings, holding Mrs. Twit's ankles to the iron ring. She went up like a rocket. Help, she screamed. Save me! But there was no saving her now. In a few seconds, she was high up in the blue, blue sky and climbing fast. Mr. Twit stood below, looking up. What a pretty sight, he said to himself. And how lovely all those balloons look in the sky. And what a marvelous bit of luck for me. At last, the old hag is lost and gone for ever oh my goodness what a crazy chapter scholars i want to know what is mr twit's motivation and what is mrs twit's motivation what is mr twit's motivation and what is mrs twit's motivation go ahead and point to your brains i am going to give you one minute to think about this get ready go Okay, so let's start with Mr. Twit's motivation. I know that we are going to start a se our sentence with either wants or needs. So I am going to say that Mr. Twit wants scholars. I know this because he literally, or in the text, I'm going to summarize it very quickly. In the text, it says, well, he built this whole plan. He put her, Mrs. Twit, on balloons, and he untied her, untied her from his stretching, from the disease, and he let her go. That's what makes me think that that is Mr. Twit's motivation. Let's go to Mrs. Twit's motivation. So, what is Mrs. Twit's motivation? Go. Say ding ding ding, you got it! <laughs> All right, yes, scholars, I do think that. I also think that Mrs. Twit's motivation is that she wants to make her feel at once. Scars, I know that she wants somebody to save her and let her down because she was saying, save me, save me. That is my evidence in the book. Scholars, do you think, do you think that they are both going to get what they want? What is it called when one, when they both can't get what they want? Tell me now, go. Say, yeah, that's right. 
I know it is it's called external conflict. It's called say so yeah, that's right. So guys, you guys rocked it today following through all of these motivations. You were super secret spy scholars and I cannot wait to find more different motivations with you. Have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow on Friday. Bye.